In this video, we want to take a look at parametric differentiation. Now let's say we have functions that are defined parametrically. Then we can go straight into differentiating and finding the gradient for a given point without the need to actually convert to Cartesian form. And the way we do this is by using the chain rule. So let's say we have two equations that are defined parametrically. So x equal to some equation, that's defined in terms of t, and y is equal to some equation, again, defined in terms of t. So using the chain rule then, we can find dy by dx here. So dy by dx, and this is equal to dy by dt, so dy by dt, and then we divide this here by dx by dt. So dx by dt, okay? Now in this case here, this is the same as taking dy by dt, so dy by dt, and then multiplying that then by the reciprocal here of dx by dt. So we times this now by dt over dx, okay? So obviously dy by dt and dx by dt would just be the derivatives of x and y with respect to t, okay? And in that case then we obtain dy by dx and that's how we would differentiate parametrically, okay? So let's take a look now at a few practice questions where we can practice parametric differentiation. Then another question one here then, we've got the curve C, which is defined parametrically by the following equations. So I've got x equal to t squared minus 3, and y is equal to 4t. Now we're asked to find the value of the gradient of the curve C when t is equal to 8. So what's important here is this phrase, the value of the gradient. So we're looking for the value of the gradient, we know that we're going to need dy by dx. So we need dy by dx here, but because we have parametric equations, so we're going to differentiate parametrically here, then in that case, we need to use the chain rule. So it's going to be dy by dt. And then we divide that here by dx by dt. So we now need dx by dt, and we also need dy by dt. So dx by dt, we would just simply differentiate x here with respect to t. So in that case, differentiate t squared minus 3 with respect to t, which would simply be 2t. That's 2t, and then for dy by dt here, so dy by dt, we're going to differentiate y with respect to t. So differentiate 4t with respect to t, which would simply be 4. So we've got everything we need here now for dy by dx. So dy by dx here, that's going to be dy by dt, that's going to be dy by dt, so that's 4. And then we divide this here by dx by dt, which is 2t. So I get 4 over 2t here for dy by dx. So in that case, then I can simplify here. This is the same as 2 over t. So I get 2 over t. But we're looking for the value of the gradient of the curve C when t is equal to 8. So all I need to do here now is substitute t equals 8 into my expression here for the derivative dy by dx. So when t is equal to 8, we get 2 over 8, this is dy by dx, so that's 2 over 8, which is a quarter there, 1 over 4, okay, so that's our solution, let's just highlight that, and that's what you should get there for question 1. Moving on to question 2 now, where we've got the curve C here, which is defined parametrically by the following equations, which we can see here. Now for part A, we're to find dy by dx in terms of t. So let's see, we've got enough room to do that up here. So if we're looking for dy by dx here and we have parametric equations, then to find dy by dx, we need to use the chain rule. This will be dy by dt. And we're going to divide that here by dx by dt. Okay. So I now need dx by dt and I also need dy by dt. So dx by dt here means we're going to differentiate x with respect to t. So if I differentiate sine squared t with respect to t, I'd have to write that as sine t squared, and then apply the chain rule here. So in that case then, I'm going to get 2 sine t multiplied by cos t. That's dx by dt. We now also need dy by dt. So dy by dt here differentiate 4 cos t with respect to t, which in this case would give us minus 4 sine t. 
Okay. So in that case, then we can find dy by dx here. So dy by dx. That's going to be equal then to dy by dt. So dy by dt is minus 4 sine t. Then we divide that here by dx by dt. So that's 2 sine t cos t. Okay. Now we can obviously simplify here. The sine terms will cancel. And obviously I can then divide here with this minus 4 and this 2. What I'm going to get then is minus 2 over cos t. Okay. So that's dy by dx in terms of t. Now for part b, it says find the value of dy by dx when t is equal to pi. So it's just a nice follow on here from part a because all I need to do now is substitute t equals pi into our expression here. And obviously this minus 2 over cos t, we can express that as the reciprocal trig function here. That would be minus 2 sec t. Okay. Probably a nicer way to write my uh, derivative there. Okay. When t is equal to pi, all I need to do then is substitute that into this expression here. So dy by dx is going to be equal to minus 2 over cos of pi. So minus 2 over cos pi. So remember, because we're differentiating um, trigonometric functions here, we're working in radians. I mean, minus 2 cos pi point into your calculator, and you should find that you get minus 1 there. So I get minus 2 over minus 1. Minus 2 divided by minus 1 would give me positive 2 there. Okay. So for dy by dx, we get 2. And then for part c here, we're asked to find an equation of the tangent to the curve c at the point p where t is equal to pi. So that's important. So when t is equal to pi, well, we've already found the gradient at that point. Okay, that's what we've just found there in part b. But for part c here, we need the x and y coordinates. So x is equal to sine squared t. So that's going to be sine squared pi. Just remember, t is equal to pi. So that's going to be sine squared pi, which in this case, that would be sine squared pi, which is sine squared, um, sine squared pi is zero. In that case, we just get x equal to zero. Not sure why that was so difficult to explain. And then for y here, y is equal to four cos t. So in that case, it's gonna be four cosine pi. Again, remember this is in radians here, and that's gonna be four times minus one. Again, just put this into your calculator here. In that case, I get minus four there. Okay, so the only thing left to do here now is use the equation of a straight line. So use um, y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. Okay, where in this case, x1 would be 0 and y1 would be minus 4. What we're going to get here is y minus minus 4. That's my y1 there, minus 4. And that's equal to m. Remember the m here was the gradient, which is 2, multiplied by x minus 0. Okay. If I just simplify all this here, y minus minus 4, so that's the same as y plus 4. That's going to be equal to 2x. Okay. And then finally, to finish with here, if we put this in the form of the equation of a straight line, so y is equal to mx plus c, I just need to subtract 4 off both sides. So therefore, y is equal to 2x minus 4, okay? And that would give us an equation of the tangent to the curve c at the point p where t is equal to pi, okay? That's our solution to part c. That's our solution to b. And that would be our solution to part a there, giving us a solution to question 2. And finally, to finish with here, let's take a look at question 3. So for question 3, we've been given the curve c, which is defined parametrically, by the following equation, so x equal to 2t minus 1, and y is equal to e to the power of 2t. And for part a, we're asked to find the value of the gradient when t is equal to natural logarithm of 2. So again, we need dy by dx here, we're looking for the value of the gradient. We need dy by dx. And because we have parametric equations here, then we need to use the chain rule. So it's going to be dy by dt. And we divide this here by dx by dt. We now need dy by dt and dx by dt. 
Oh, dx by dt here. In that case, differentiate 2t minus 1 with respect to t, so that would simply be 2. And then for dy by dx, oh sorry, dy by dt here. So dy by dt, differentiate e to 2t with respect to t, which in this case would be 2e to the 2t. Okay, so we've got everything we need here for dy by dx. So dy by dx here, that's going to be dy by dt, so that's 2e to 2t. And then we divide that by dx by dt, which is 2. Okay, which in that case simplifies quite nicely to just give us e to the 2t there. Okay. So we want the value of the gradient when t is equal to the natural logarithm of 2. We need to substitute t equals the natural logarithm of 2 into this expression here. In that case, dy by dx is going to be equal to e to 2 ln 2. Okay. And I can apply the properties of logarithms here and exponentials. So in this case, then, I can use the power rule. So this would be ln 2 squared, which would be ln 4. So I get e, the natural logarithm of 4. And then using the properties here of exponentials and logarithms, they're the inverse of each other, so they'll cancel, and I simply get left with 4 of them. Okay? So the value of the gradient when t is equal to the natural logarithm of 2 would be 4. So that's part A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the screen so we can answer part B. So for part B, it says determine whether the curve C has any stationary points. Now, remember, we just found dy by dx there. So dy by dx. That was equal to e to the 2t. Okay, so this is for part b. Now remember, the curve here would have stationary points when the derivative dy by dx is equal to 0. So in that case then, I take e to the 2t and set that equal to 0. So now what we need to do here is solve for t. But the issue here is, e to the 2t equals 0. There are no solutions here. There are no values of t such that the left-hand side here would be equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, no solutions exist. So no solutions exist for this equation. And what that tells us then is that the curve C has no stationary points. The curve C has no stationary points. Okay. That's all we need to show there. So the key idea there is to just show that there's no solutions for the derivative here being equal to zero. And in that case, then, if there's no solutions, um, then obviously that just shows that the curve C has no stationary points. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question three. That brings to the end of this video on parametric differentiation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at implicit differentiation.